uh, that people join as we go. Um, as you have heard, uh, the meeting will be recorded. Uh, just this is to share afterwards in our YouTube channel uh, so that uh, it may benefit everyone in the future. Okay, um, so thanks for coming. Um, I'm, for those who don't know me, I'm Martin Vieira. I'm a national contact point for Horizon Europe Pillar 3. Um, so that's the European Innovation Council, European Innovation Ecosystems, and European Innovation and Technology Institute. Um, today we're going to talk about the European Innovation Council. Um, I'm going to go give a very brief overview of um, the new work program, um, which doesn't have significant changes, but we'll just uh, give an overview of the mandates, the challenges, uh, and so on. Uh, and then we'll present the um, EIC support scheme, which we've reformed uh, in uh, going on for a couple of years, but now we've decided to open it up to uh, the whole of the EIC uh, program. So not only the accelerator, but also Pathfinder and transition. And then you'll be free to, to ask questions. Um, we'll have an open discussion. Uh, and of course, you know, you, you can always reach out to me for a uh, one-to-one -one meeting. Okay, just give me a second. Okay, um, so I'm going to give a kind of an overview of the EIC. Um, as you know, it's the main instrument uh, to support uh, innovative SMEs uh, within Horizon Europe. And it tries to cover all technological uh, development levels from uh, early research to technology maturation uh, to development and scale up. So through these three programs, which are Pathfinder for the basic research, transition for the maturation, and the accelerator um, to uh, develop and scale up um, these ventures. Uh, all along the program, uh, EIC also gives other services beyond the grants, um, beyond their grant programs, uh, such as business acceleration uh, services. They also offer proactive management support uh, with uh, the program managers, and they also offer um, additional funding uh, so you can not only transition from Pathfinder to transition, but between them, you can also get some kind of top-up grants, uh, which allows you to kind of uh, bridge the gap. Um, something very important about the uh, European Innovation Council is that um, it's its target. It really um, aims to support high-risk innovations of all kind. They need to be breakthrough, market-creating, and deep tech. So at the forefront of research, uh, but also they need to uh, have the potential of having a very great impact uh, in their area. Um, so as I said, the idea is that these three programs are kind of sequential. So if you um, have a basic research idea that you need to validate, you will apply to Pathfinder. Um, if you validate this, this concept, this technology, you can then apply to um, the transition fund. These two first uh, funds give to 100% funding because the idea is that they're, you know, you're still uh, financing research and development. Uh, and uh, then finally, when you have kind of a proof of concept and that's ready and you want to uh, commercialize it and scale it up, you can apply to the accelerator, um, which finances um, uh, grants up to 2.5 million, but also an equity component uh, that's uh, whose purpose is to use to scale up um, the, the, the technology. So from TRL 8 to 9, this last part. Uh, so the idea is to provide really a complete uh, set of solutions uh, for, um, uh, for SMEs. Uh, so this is a kind of a big overview, uh, which is in the in the work program, and it's it's quite useful. Um, just have the big picture, um, but we'll go over these uh, in detail just now. Okay, so uh, Pathfinder. The idea is to develop the scientific basis to underpin breakthrough technology. Um, the good news is that the budgets have been well defended this year, and um, there hasn't been any significant decrease. We have more or less uh, the same level of funding as last year, um, which is very welcome. Um, so EIC Pathfinder, uh, like the other modalities, have uh, two 
two options, let's say the open and the challenges modality. So the open is um, you submit your idea, whatever it is, um, it's your pitch with uh, any field of science, technology or application without uh, any thematic priorities. Or uh, you have the challenges, which is more a uh, top-down approach, uh, which is driven uh, like the title indicates by challenges. And these are determined by a set of program managers. They have a portfolio approach. So for instance, if they want to work on a clean energy, they will have a range of technologies that uh, they will support that will be complementary. Um, so at this stage, the requirement is that the proposals are submitted by a consortium of at least two for challenges or three uh, entities for um, the open modality, uh, and at least in one EU country. Uh, and as I said, this provides 100% funding rates, um, which is great uh, because you can um, really dedicate all the resources to advancing your technology. Um, the Pathfinder has some uh, gatekeepers. Um, so this means that these are, let's say, some conditions that the, the proposals need to meet. The research has to be interdisciplinary and collaborative. And it needs to uh, present a convincing long-term long vision of a radically new technology that has the potential to have a transformative positive effect in our economy and society. Um, so not only you need to, your technology needs to be, let's say, at the forefront uh, of technological development, but also um, the potential impact needs to be transformative. So if it's um, a technology that will only provide an sort of incremental change to something existing, it's perhaps not so suitable. Um, this, of course, is as well um, how you envision your technology and, and the potential application. As you know, uh, we might start with an idea with a technology and change as we go because the applications might be different. So it all depends on how we frame it and, and so on, but we need to satisfy this criteria. Um, the science needs to be concrete, novel, and uh, needs to uh, be ambitious and work towards the technology breakthrough. Uh, so the idea is that um, your idea through this process, through this proposal, through this project, needs to uh, have a concrete result that will advance the envisioned technology. And finally, it needs to be high risk and high gain. So if your research is not high risk and not high or not high gain, it's not really right. What they want is that um, that this idea, they want to support ideas they would that would not be supported otherwise. This is why they're concentrating in this high risk, high gain. Uh, and some of the outcomes that are expected are a proof of principles that the main ideas underlying uh, the technology are feasible. So, you know, is the technology viable? Um, you should start taking the necessary measures to allow future uptake. So that means uh, mainly through protection of IP. Uh, you need to start thinking about it from, uh, from the moment you apply. Um, because as, as we saw, the, really the objective of the IC is to bring uh, commercial products to the market. Uh, so the, the IP protection is, um, is very important. Um, you need to involve uh, and empower the key actors uh, that have uh, the potential to become future leaders. Um, so here um, you need to have some sort of vision on what will happen if the technology starts to become um, commercial. So for instance, if you have an SME involved, maybe the CEO and the, uh, or the COO have um, a key role to play in the future of this technology. So you need to make that clear. And, and in this sense, the, the consortium needs to be needs to be have a strong rationale behind it. Really, everyone who's part of the consortium should add value and be an active part of the process. Uh, and of course, um, the partnership should have uh, a clear idea of what will happen with uh, the project results. So um, this will have to be uh, thought from the beginning, like what will happen with the IP once uh, the project ends. If this is not clear, it might you know, indicate uh, potential conflicts in the future, and that will be negatively assessed. Um, and uh, this transversal uh, gender dimension of, uh, you know, looking to empower female research researchers and achieve gender uh, balance among the work package leaders. Um, so um, the proposal is, is fairly straightforward. Um, it's uh, 
uh, as you might know, typical uh, Horizon um, application form with a part A, which is uh, basically your, your your data, your administrative data, and the part B, which is uh, basically your proposal, um, which will be about uh, 17 pages long for open and 25 um, pages for challenges. Uh, so how will the proposal be uh, evaluated um, through these three criteria? Excellence, impact, quality and efficiency um, with different ways, with different weights and the most important weight being given to excellence. Um, as you see, the thresholds, uh, the threshold for excellence is quite high, it's four out of five, but for impact and quality and efficiency, they are, they are a bit lower. Um, and the reason for this is that these are um, evolving issues that can be addressed uh, as the projects go along. Um, the evaluation procedure is uh, increasingly, um, let's say, smooth. Um, so uh, there's an individual remote uh, evaluation phase. Um, so this means that um, the experts will review the, the proposal and eventually um, give an opinion on it. Uh, here, if the, the opinion is negative, you will have the chance of uh, rebuting the comments. So that means you will respond in a, a, a short manner uh, the main points addressed by the jury, and um, then the proposal can be uh, evaluated as well. Um, and for the challenges, given the very concrete nature of um, what they're looking for, um, uh, there is uh, the, the rebuttal phase is not is not uh, considered. Okay, some of the challenges we have are clean and efficient cooling, um, architecture, engineering, and construction digitalization for a novel triad of design, fabrication, materials, precision, nutrition, responsible electronics in space uh, solar energy harvesting for innovative space application. Um, so again, these challenges are, are you know, uh, quite specific in what they're looking for. If there's any of them um, which is interesting to you, just uh, uh, let me know and uh, we can, uh, I can get more information on the challenges and we can explore uh, together to what extent they are suitable. Um, okay. Moving on to EIC transition, I don't know if anyone has any questions on um, specifically on Pathfinder, but if you do, uh, you know, do do let me know in the in the chat. Um, okay, um, regarding EIC transition, so um, the idea is to start translating research into innovation. The same concept. We have an open and challenges approach. Um, the funding is slightly uh, lower than uh, Pathfinder, 2.5 million per project, but also 100% funding rate. And here uh, we accept, uh, EIC accepts both uh, single beneficiaries, um, so it might be a single SME that does research, or small consortiums, which may include universities and users, research organizations, etc. Um, considering this is a drive towards uh, um, innovation in the market. Um, the idea is that the private sector partner will run with the results, let's say, of the projects. So um, this needs to as well be clear um, how the ownership will be um, exploited through the private sector uh, partner. Um, so the transition program supports, let's say, different types of transition, a transition to technology to advance research up to TRL 5 or 6. Um, so this we're talking mainly about strategic technologies that need some time to mature to be market ready. Um, then we have a transition to market. So this is already a project more led by an SME or startup um, that wants to take the results and um, needs to mature the technology and uh, make it more market ready. And then a transition to entrepreneurship. Um, so the idea here is kind of a uh, spin-off of the results, um, that the results might not be expected, but um, they have a high uh, technology readiness level and can be commercialized quickly with the right seed funding. Um, so uh, here as well, there might be a, an element of, um, you know, how maybe academics that are involved in the research might want to lead a commercial operation. Um, so the idea is that it provides a flexible scheme for different types of situations. 
um, the thing about transition is that it is restricted uh, to application based on results generated by existing projects. Um, so even the open modality, though you have a freedom of using um, the results from any projects from the projects that are listed here in the slides, uh, it's also referred to in the, in the work program. Um, you can apply to develop any of them, but you need to have the right to these results. If your uh, idea has not been previously funded by these programs, it is not eligible uh, to transition. Um, one of the changes is that this year, the transition challenges have been opened up slightly to include all projects funded under Horizon 2020 or Horizon Europe. Um, and as I mentioned, the eligibility is restricted to the results from the projects, not necessarily the beneficiaries. So um, it might be that uh, your SME, uh, your company will discuss with the university to exploit their results from a previous um, Horizon 2020 project. And as long as you have an agreement uh, uh, with the university, uh, you, can, you can run with it. Um, so what you need to have is the right to the results. Um, so again, we have a few, what well, they call them gatekeepers and Pathfinder. Here they call it something different, but uh, the idea is it's the same as these guiding principles. So here already we're looking that the technology has some very specific applications. We need to have this identified and a clear road to market. Um, it's not anymore about proving a concept or how how will I how will I apply my technology, but this vision should start to be clear. There needs to be some exploration of the potential markets um, and the potential competitors. So this is this is starts to be very important at this stage that you have this kind of commercial readiness uh, and hat on. So you know. Um, who are going to be my customers? Where where are where are they based? and who am I competing with? And then of course, um, the idea is that uh, you need to have a, a, a team that's motivated and entrepreneurial, though the entrepreneurial side always can be as well uh, developed, but uh, they need to have the commitment to drive the idea towards commercialization. So, um, Regarding the challenges, um, we only have three, um, which are uh, full-scale micro nano bio devices for medical and medical research applications, environmental intelligence. Um, so this is more about um, environmental technologies and how they can they can impact different uh, critical uh, issues. And um, this one, which is the last one, which is very much linked to the Chips Act, it's cheap scale optical frequency uh, comp. Uh, so this is about the chips and how um, how efficient they are. Um, so um, at this stage for transition, the criteria are the same: excellence, impact, and quality and efficiency. But the impact has a higher threshold, which means that um, what I just mentioned before that um, you need to have a clear idea of how your technology is going to be commercialized, used, and how it will uh, impact. Um, okay, I, we have a questions about uh, challenges, which um, I will answer right now. Do the challenges you just showed represent the field of research where most research proposals are requested or more interested in scientific terms too? Um, no, I mean, the, the challenges are determined, um, go back to the challenges, they are determined by the EIC program um, on base of the um, intersection, it's an intersection really of um, previous project results, um, EU policy priorities uh, linked to, you know, a variety of strategies like the Green Deal, uh, the CHIPS Act, um, and also, uh, you know, environmental or health commitments. Um, so this this is more where, where the doesn't really reflect, it reflects a need, let's say. This, uh, these challenges reflect a need, a need analysis by the, uh, the team at the EIC. So it's what they want to research. We have a little bit of power over this um, in, 
in uh, program committees and so on, so we can feed in and, and, and give some feedback on, on the challenges. So if there are any, um, you know, uh, um, challenge areas um, that, that you identify, we can always uh, feed them back. It's, of course, very difficult um, to, to influence this process, but um, we, can always, uh, we can always do this, um, try. <clears throat> I think I might be... Um, Going a bit a bit slow, so I might I might go a bit a bit uh, a bit faster now. Um, uh, transition the the evaluation is um, it's not it's more um, less score based and more based on two decision either go or no go um, with um, an interview uh, after the uh, the submission of the full proposals. Um, and uh, here the, the, the jury is composed of uh, up to six members with uh, one program manager uh, usually that uh, will be will have knowledge about um, the area. Um, and the idea here is that they will, um, usually at this stage, um, the less developed part is the, commercial, uh, the commercialization part. So usually it will uh, mostly be an interview about this, though of course, uh, the science, if the science is not, not so clear, uh, it will also, um, We'll also go over this. Okay, um, finally, the accelerator. The idea is to uh, scale up uh, high impact innovations. Um, we have, uh, so this is the really the, the largest, uh, the largest budgets. Um, like uh, several times over um, <clears throat> uh, transition Pathfinder ones. Um, the grant amount as well is is, is limited, but uh, as I mentioned, there is um, the option of having follow-up equity funding. So the uh, funding rate is only 70% because the idea is that here the beneficiaries already have some um, they already have some commercial uh, income, uh, and um, then the um, uh, the equity is only meant for the scale-up. So that means that they will. Um, they will ask to, uh, sorry, they will ask to see that um, the budget allocated uh, to the equity component um, is uh, strictly used for scale up. So that means that um, you cannot use, um, you cannot use this grant, comp this, uh, sorry, equity component to fund uh, technological development. Um, okay. I don't know if there are any questions on, on transition or accelerator so far. Okay, so we're gonna move on. Um, sorry. Oh, sorry, it seems uh, have an issue with one slide. Um, uh, one second, please. Yes, I'm missing one slide. I'm sorry about this. Um, just to give you uh, an overview um, of the uh, challenges um, for 2023. Um, these again are, you know, uh, quite specific. So, so I do invite you to to, to reach out to me if you're uh, interested in any of them. Um, I know from the participants, you know, some are perhaps uh, uh, particularly um, relevant. For instance, there's we have the new European Bauhaus and digitalization of architecture, engineering and construction for decarbonization. We also have aerosol and surface decontamination for pandemic management, novel biomar biomarker based assays for personalized cancer treatment, energy storage, quantum, computer ha quantum computing hardware and quantum sensors for the real environment, semiconductor chip design, sustainable and resilient agriculture, and customer-oriented innovative space technologies and services. So quite a few, a few challenges. And as you see, they um, tend to overlap with other um, EU priority areas. Um, again, the evaluation criteria is, um, well, it's very similar, but 
slightly different. We have the uh, excellence and impact. And of course, the excellence and impact, they look at slightly different uh, parameters uh, according to the level of, of technology readiness. Uh, here, uh, the impact is already is 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 not not so much um, not so much about you know a, a potential hypothetic uh, impact, but more a very concrete uh, plan to scale up uh, and uh, how this scale up will impact uh, uh, very specific domains like the environment, uh, the market it's targeting, and and so on. Uh, the same for excellence. Excellence will look at uh, more specifically at to what extent the uh, innovation is breakthrough. So you know how it's um, really needs to to upend uh, the market it's it's targeting. Uh, so it needs to either disrupt or create a market and the timing. So as you see, it's 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 um, very specific. Uh, uh, what they're looking for. And so the idea is that the timing for your technology also needs to be right because of X, Y, Z reasons. Uh, for instance, uh, here, um, there might be a, a number of, of um, you know, social, economical, and political circumstances that can support uh, uh, the timing of your technology. And then finally, um, instead of the quality and efficiency of implementation, we have the level of risk, implementation, and need for EU support. So here, the important things are, are the team that everyone is, is um, has the skills that are needed and uh, and that the level of risk is too high for private investors to go alone and that uh, your company could not do uh, what you what it intends to do without EU support. Um, here you can ask, uh, as I mentioned, you have a grant and equity component. It's quite flexible how you can ask for them. Um, here there are um, some um, challenges in the investment component uh, of institutional nature so so it's good to if you're going to uh, ask for um, grant and an investment um, we can we can uh, have a chat to see um, how how the process is working uh, just to make sure that the companies uh, get the funding they need when they need it um, so again uh, these kind of uh, guiding principles uh, for the accelerator. Uh, the product has to be, the new product service or business model needs to be high impact. Like I said, create new market or disrupt uh, existing ones, not necessarily only in Europe, but also abroad. It needs to be uh, an SME that applies or uh, in certain cases, a mid cap. So up to 500 employees is accepted. Um, and finally, the risks need to be too high for private investors alone to invest. So if you're if they deem that uh, actually your idea is not not so high risk and that um, private investors will invest, uh, it might be uh, rejected even if it's an excellent idea that has a high impact and would disrupt the market because the argument is that um, well if you can get uh, funding from the private sector you shouldn't be seeking uh, EU funding. So again these are all things we can help you assess. Um, so the proposals here for Accelerator, it's it's quite nice. We have a short proposal that can be submitted anytime. Um, then you have an invitation to prepare a, a full proposal, which is somewhat complex. Um, but uh, but that's why we have the support scheme, which I will mention uh, very shortly. Um, and then finally, if the proposal is is uh, positively accepted, uh, let's say reviewed uh, through uh, go and no go. Uh, uh, decision from the jury members, uh, you will be invited to an interview. Um, okay, so for the equity funding, it's up to from 0 0.4 for 500,000 euros to 15 million in the form of equity or quasi equity. Um, as I said, it's for market scale up, deployment and scale up. Uh, uh, and here the idea is that we uh, both the EIC and the beneficiary need to crowd in additional investments. Um, the idea is that the capital invested is patient capital, so um, it will be uh, the idea is that they won't be seeking an exit for at least 7, 10, up to 15 years. And so the idea is that they have a minority ownership from 10 to 25%, and so that the other uh, investors um, invest the rest. Um, <clears throat> okay, um, once, um, once uh, if you get a, a Positive response. There will be a negotiation process. Um, 
especially on the implementation uh, of the work, because the idea is that it's a milestone-based uh, approach for management. Um, so they will, the IC will work uh, with you to try and define a milestone-based plan that will minimize uh, uh, the burden. And you will have, of course, progress meeting to, to monitor this. So the idea is that the EIC will, um, will support you as well uh, along the way. Um, again, this is a bit of a complex diagram, but the idea is that there is a rebuttal procedure. So if you get a negative response, uh, sometimes um, we get a response from two juries uh, that are very positive and then very negative from the third. So um, it might be seen as some inconsistency. And here you have a chance of, uh, of submitting some uh, responses uh, uh, to the specific comments. And this will mean that um, they will reevaluate uh, this and you might have a chance of, um, of, uh, of, um, of uh, reaching the interview. Uh, with this rebuttal, even though you might have had um, a negative first answer. Uh, here, one thing I, I um, didn't include in my slides, but that is, is um, quite interesting, is that um, if you reach the interview stage and the accelerator, um, even if you get a no-go, you might be able to, um, to get granted a seal of excellence. This is a recognition from um, the commission that the project, uh, while it has not been funded, is has a lot of potential and deserves to be funded, though from other sources. So the idea is that this seal of excellence um, will provide you other opportunity, other funding opportunities, um, which uh, you know we can explore uh, once you you have it. But uh, for sure, um, let's say it's another um, another characteristic of the program, which. Um, adds value because that means that, okay, if you put, put in all this work and you've reached this stage, um, having a seal of excellence means it's, um, it's not certain, but it's, it's, it really increases your chances of getting alternative funding. Um, okay, so that's it for the work program overview. Um, as I said, it's just an overview, so feel free to reach out to speak about more specific um, uh, interests you might have. Uh, and uh, now I move on to the EIC support scheme. Um, so as you saw, it's the program is fairly complex and particularly compared to the to its predecessor. Um, so at MCST we felt that um, in fact we're not we're not alone. This is happening in many European countries. We need me the rain took me out um, i'm going to reshare my screen um so i'm not sure where you lost me but basically i was saying that um how um at mcst we decided to to uh kind of open up the support scheme beyond the accelerator as um and, and here i know we have some some uh, participants uh, uh from uh higher education institutions, uh, which will be, you know, of course, interested in potentially more in Pathfinder or Transition. So we thought it was uh, important uh, to support this as, as well it can support in the future, the spin-off of, you know, these research ideas into more into commercial application. Um, so basically, uh, if you're going to apply uh, to the Accelerator, you have, uh, sorry, to Accelerator, Transition or Pathfinder, you can access different types of support based on um, basically the requirements of each call. So uh, all calls have a, a proposal component, proposal development component. So uh, as option A, uh, we propose the proposal development grant. So this is 10,000 euros to hire uh, a consultant to help with um, your project idea formulation, the work plan, budgeting, um, the market research. Uh, so wh whatever you might need to make your proposal successful under any of these programs. Uh, for a pathfinder and transition is uh, first the proposal development is first stage so if you're going to apply you can um, apply beforehand uh, to the eic support scheme at least four months before the deadline 
the idea is that that way you will have time to work with a consultant. Um, and uh, for the accelerator, it's a second stage uh, full proposal. So uh, uh, these, this grant is only available for the second stage. So that means that you need to have passed the first stage, which is you know the short pitch. Um, and if you're accepted uh, with this, you can request the proposal development grant. Um, we also have a business coaching grant. So here um, it's for uh, exclusively for the accelerator on the first stage. Um, so the idea here is to give you uh, as well some funds, 5,000 euros, to hire a business coach for up to 50 hours. Here the business coach will help you make your idea pitch ready, let's say. So um, typically they will um, uh, have a look at your pitch, try to understand your idea, and then they will put themselves in the shoes of the jury and uh, kind of critique uh, critique your proposal and work with you to make sure you address all the criteria that the jury will look at. Uh, and finally, we have a pitch coach grant, which is up to 2000 euros, and this is more um, to support you with um, the actual pitch, uh, video pitch that you need to send in. Um, so this is for the video pitch in the accelerator first stage, or this can also be used uh, for the second stage transition interview, where it's not quite a pitch, but you will be grilled, um, let's say you would be grilled by a jury um, about um, some specific aspects. So um, here we consider it as well, it's important that, um, you know, if the person is not uh, so comfortable speaking in public and so on, uh, they can get support to develop this. I see we have a question in the chat, so I'll try to um okay can the grant the proposal development grant be used to hire multiple consultants up to ten thousand euros since consultants might not be experts in everything okay so um we did not uh predict um this um this issue uh so no the the proposal development grant should be used to hire a single consultant um, which should have the expertise uh, in your in the area. So I will talk a bit more about um, the, the consultant uh, requirements and, and the application procedure. So um, basically we will evaluate two things in, in these proposals. Um, so particularly for the, for instance, for the proposal development grant in Pathfinder and Transition, it's a first stage interview. So here um, it's a first stage proposal. Proposal. So here, what we will do, we will also evaluate your idea. So not us at MCST, but external experts, uh, which we will hire. They will uh, evaluate how your idea fits with all the criteria I just spoke about. Uh, is it a high risk, high gain research? Is it interdisciplinary and so on? So here they will say, OK, um, the idea is fit for EIC, so they should apply. Or not. If the idea is not a good fit for EIC, then uh, the proposal will be rejected. For accelerator, however, it's a second stage proposal, so you will only have to submit the proof that you were accepted for the second stage, so that you pass the first stage. And here, what we will ask is that um, you do some research on on uh, potential consultants that could help you. So let's imagine you are um, um, you have a. a um, a proposal that is about health, um, health and um, uh, biotech, let's say. So here you will look for a number of European uh, consultants. They can be Malta based, they can be Brussels based, they can be from everywhere. But the idea is that you do some homework and that you identify three uh, consultants that have experience, not only uh, in submitting to EIC, but also that uh, have a suitable expertise regarding your intervention area. Um, usually, I mean, splitting those 10,000 euros might have, I think, um, um, limited effect. Um, so, so far, we just, um, the, the idea is that this will be used with one consultant, but one consultant that needs to be a good fit. So you will choose three consultants, and we'll ask to explain why you chose your consultant, which you are free to do. We just need to see the rationale uh, behind it and that uh, the elected consultant has the expertise um, that will take your proposal, uh, let's say, um, to, to, 
to to a very high quality level that allows you to to hopefully get the funds. Um, so I think we've had a I had a question on. Okay, uh, I think the challenges questions about uh, I think I've answered this before. I'm not sure. Um, so maybe maybe it got lost. So the question is, do the challenges you showed represent the field of research where most research proposals are requested? Uh, and the answer is no. The challenges represent uh, the priorities um, of um, of uh, the EIC. So the EIC will, um, together with um, you know other parts of the commission, they will um, have a look at the whole policy commitments of um, of the EU. Uh, for instance, the Green Deal, um, you know, environmental commitments, and so on. And um, by providing a portfolio analysis of specific challenges, they will say, okay, actually, um, and they will take into account the timing, for instance, as well. So they might say, actually, uh, at this po point, the priorities for the research in the EU are X, Y, Z. So this is why we see now um, a couple of um, a couple of themes on chips and you know electronics and responsible electronics uh, because you know at this moment the um, we had the, the chip act and it's something that has a very high uh, uh, priority so it's more a reflection of the of EU's priorities um, okay um, okay um, so the idea, as I was saying, is that you uh, you will do your homework and you will find three options for uh, either a consultant for the proposal development, for the business coaching, uh, or the or the pitch coaching. Uh, if you're applying to accelerator, for instance, you can request uh, in the first stage. You can request both the business coaching grant and the pitch coach grant at the same time. Uh, and then, if you get accepted and you get past the first stage, you can. Uh, request the proposal development. So if you're applying to Accelerator, you can get up to 17,000 euros to develop your, to help develop your pitch and proposal. Um, and then for transition, uh, giving the short time given between um, the acceptance of the proposal and the interview, the idea is that if you're applying uh, for the AC scheme, you should, uh, if you need it, you should also request together with the proposal development grant, the pitch coach grant. Uh, and once uh, you get past the first stage, you will just submit um, submit to us uh, the acceptance, and um, this will then uh, activate the option for the pitch coach grant. So, what do you need? Um, what? Oh, let's see. If we have another question. Uh, yes. So Nikki uh, asks about the support scheme if they are under state aid. Yes, they are under state aid. So the de minimis uh, uh, rule, um, which basically states that um, you may get up to uh, two hundred thousand euros in um, national fund support. Uh, so if you are in the past three years, so uh, this is something we we will you know we can help you as well uh, assess if if, um, if this prevents you from applying or not. But yes, they fall under the state table. Um, okay. Um, so we try to keep it simple. What do you need to apply? You need to meet the EIC call requirements and be Malta based. Um, so you know if you can apply to EIC, and um, and you're a Maltese company or university or research organization. Uh, or private sector organization, you can apply uh, to the AC. Um, as I mentioned, for any first stage submission, be it for Pathfinder, Transition, or Accelerator, the, evaluate, the experts will evaluate the suitability of the project for EIC. So if it doesn't meet um, those uh, gatekeeper or guiding principles, um, we will. Um, it might be rejected. Um, of course, the, the experts will be asked to have, let's say, a consensus on their decision. So the idea is that the process will be um, uh, quite transparent. Um, another requirement is, uh, so I mentioned for uh, transition and Pathfinder, um, you can, uh, so for Pathfinder, you have to apply as a consortium and for transition, you may apply as a consortium. So in this case, if you uh, want to apply for the grants, you should be coordinator. If the Malta-based organization is not a coordinator, 
they cannot access this support scheme because they won't be writing the proposal or doing the pitch. So it, it doesn't make sense. So either um, you might need to plan to apply as a mono beneficiary under transition or accelerator or as a coordinator on the pathfinder and transition. So we need to apply at least four months before the deadline. Um, and also submit, of course, submit the proposal in time and um, send us the proof of submission um, of, uh, of the proposal. And of course, for any second stage support, we need the first, um, the first stage proof. So that uh, basically the email letter that from the EU that says you're invited to the second stage uh, interview. Um, we will, of course, so like I said, we ask you to do some homework, you know, uh, really the idea is, is that you find what's best for you, but you just want to know uh, how you went, went along with it. Um, uh, so, you know, we need to find three consultants which have relevant expertise, ideally have a meeting with each of them. And based on that, you choose what you think is the best fit. Uh, although of course, you know, we need to follow a, a best value for money principle as well. Um, then um, the application form needs to be signed by the legal representative. Uh, reports need to be uh, submitted uh, specific to the EIC uh, support scheme. Um, so the submission of the reimbursement of expenses uh, is post submission. So um, this is not a, a pre-financing grant. You're expected to, um, to pay for the services and that get, then get uh, uh, reimbursed. Once we, we, we get the reimbursement request, we really try to, to be very fast. So within you know, uh, uh, some weeks, uh, the idea is definitely under two months, you'd get the, uh, the reimbursement. So um, basically what I, what I mentioned a couple of times, we need your idea to be suitable for the EIC criteria, especially particularly the excellence. We need to have uh, appropriate TRL levels. Uh, here we can again we can discuss one on one about where your where your idea might fit in this uh, EIC, let's say, path. Um, and uh, then the uh, consultant track record needs to be needs to be uh, uh, satisfying. Um, so, I hope. Um, this has been, you know, me talking a lot. I hope uh, I've said, uh, uh, give you some some relevant information, and and particularly I hope that this scheme is is uh, um, relevant uh, to you. Um, so um, I have a question uh, now from uh, Anti, uh, who asked. Oh, sorry, I won't screen since you're still sharing. Uh, when we are writing the proposals, it would be beneficial to benchmark them about, against the current EIC mindset slash political environment. Is MCS able to give such feedback on the draft proposal or idea? Uh, yes, um, we are able to. Uh, this is something that as NCPs uh, we offer in, in general. In EIC, I think it's, it's, it's particularly uh, uh, important. Um, we don't have necessarily um, uh, you know the same expertise as, as the experts uh, of, the, of uh, that will evaluate the IC proposals, but uh, uh, as you mentioned, we have kind of we, we are exposed to kind of the mindset and, and what they're looking for. Uh, so yes, absolutely, we can always review the proposal. Um, though I think one thing it's it's worth uh, discussing even before the proposal stage, because. Um, as you saw, a lot of these criteria are about how you envision your technology. So even from the beginning, there are some tweaks that you can do as how you will present the idea. Uh, but yes, if you want um, if you want an external point of view on your proposal, uh, you can always share it with me. I always ask at least you know a couple of weeks before you intend uh, uh, to apply, so I can have at least a few days to get back to you, and then you have a few days to to incorporate feedback. Uh, so yes, I. Be delighted to to receive your proposal um, uh, about this and, uh, and and review them accordingly. So I think we have less time uh, for the questions that I planned. I had planned about fifteen minutes, so I I, I spoke a lot. Um, I don't know if there are any more questions. Um, 
I think so. What we'll do is um, we're going to share the slides uh, after after the call, and we're also going to publish um, the video on uh, on YouTube. And yes, uh, thank you, Sandra. We have a very very um, short poll. Uh, if you could um, please answer it uh, before you before you leave, that'd be we'd be very very grateful.